Hello guys and welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation with me your host Owen, the channel that brings you your team every single day, the channel that brings you all that great content all for free, all you've got to do is hit that sub, ring the notification bell and please give the video a like guys, it does help out. Well we've got a bit of news obviously on what is today, match day, but not just any match day, it's a massive, massive match day, it is the third qualifying round, first leg at Ibrox tonight, Rangers versus Servette in the UEFA Champions League as Rangers start their quest to return to the group stages of the Champions League, looking to obviously avenge and put right that uh, hideous record from last season. Now, potential opponents for either Rangers or Servette, uh, PSV and Sturm Graz played last night in Eindhoven, Final score was 4-1 to the Dutch Giants PSV, giving them a commanding lead as they head over to the second leg in Graz in Austria. But our attentions obviously have to be on the game at Ibrox tonight as Rangers entertain Swiss side Servette. Now, Michael Beale obviously held his pre-match press conference today, and we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about uh, a couple of... Uh, Svet players who could be dangerous and one Svet player who could be missing, much to the annoyance of Svet. Not because of suspension, no, because of visa problems. Also, weird news coming out of England tonight that Wolves have sacked manager Julian Lopetegui before the season is even begun. And why Rangers boss Michael Beale is one of the favourites to get the job. Uh, you know, but uh, and obviously as well, we're going to talk a little bit about the other things going on around the club. Uh, obviously, we're going to start with the news that uh, from Michael Beale's press conference uh, that he gave yesterday before uh, the game tonight. Michael Beale spoke to the media um, and offered, you know, different pieces of information, lots of different bits of information about the game. He talked about. Uh, Savetti talked about uh, Saturday. He talked about so, uh, some of the Rangers players. Now, one, two, actually, two surprising things to come out of that press conference were, first of all, when questioned about Rangers' style of play and Rangers' way of playing on Saturday against Kilmarnock, Beale commented there was nothing wrong with the style. It was just we were lacking decisiveness. Uh, which caused a bit of a meltdown, if, I'm, if it has to be said, on in social media terms. Now, I know whatever a manager says, whatever to do with Rangers always causes a little bit of a, a meltdown, doesn't it, on social media, especially, obviously, after Saturday, where everyone's uh, senses are heightened and everyone's emotions are heightened after that uh, hideous display on against Kilmarnock. Now, one thing that surprised me was that comment, there was nothing wrong with the style. Well, Michael, I for one, and I'm sure I speak on behalf of quite a lot of Rangers fans here, didn't see a style, didn't see any tactics and didn't see a plan. So if it's OK and it's fine, well, I'd hate to see what's awful. Now, I know I get that he's not going to come out and say his team were awful, his team were rubbish and they weren't good enough and et cetera, et cetera, because... He's not going to throw his players under the bus, not in public anyway. You know, I'm sure what might have been said behind the scenes um, in the dressing room on Saturday and, uh, and throughout training this week may have been a whole lot different to what he is actually saying to the media. I mean, obviously, Michael has been accused on several occasions of perhaps saying a little bit too much to the media um, at times. And I think it's certainly something that perhaps James Bisgrove should do in terms of taking him to one side and kind of chatting to him about what, how to speak to the media and what to say and what not to say. Another bit of interesting uh, conversation that came out of Michael Beale's news conference was his comments about fashion at Sakala. Michael Beale said that he thought that fashion was one of the players that he was going to rely on this season. Surprising indeed, given all the money that has been spent on forward-thinking players in this transfer window, you know, the likes of Dessas, De Neo, Sima, uh, Lammers, etc., um, but he said that the offer that came in for uh, Fashion Sakala, thought to be around four million, was just too, um, plus obviously the personal terms was just too good for the club and for Fashion to turn down. You know, he talked about the fact that Fashion would always be welcome back at the club, and obviously was full of praise for Fashion Sakala. Um, but again, 
you've got to take with a pinch of salt what he says. He isn't going to say anything bad about a player that's departing. You know, he can say now that Takala was a player that he was going to rely on, which kind of flies in the face of the stories that were in the media, the reports. And I know we have to take what the media say with a pinch of salt in terms of the fact that they said that Fashion was told that he could find a new club and they wanted him to move on. Surprising indeed, given what Michael said today. But, you know, as we've just said, you, you do have to take at times what Michael says with a slight pinch of salt because he does seem to, to like to talk. But, you know, his conversation, his talk, his thoughts about Fashion Sakala seem to be very clear. And, um, you know, perhaps it's the trading model, perhaps it's a situation where, you know, if a decent bid comes in for one of our players we have to accept it in this in this day and age we can't afford not to as we seek to obviously increase the income revenue streams into the club but uh, certainly a very interesting one on fashion sakala um michael bill also talked a little bit gave a little bit of an injury update he talked about the fact that tom lawrence and kimar roof were both back and training well kimar roof obviously featured the other day but uh Tom Lawrence um, is obviously back in training, which is good news for Rangers. Uh, but both, they said the reasons why Tom and uh, Tom Ben Davis uh, and Kimar Roof were not included in the European squad was because of the fact that at the time of selecting the European squad, which he said was just for these two games, neither of them were fit and they didn't want to take any chances. Uh, he also gave a fitness update on Ben Davis and Ridvan Yilmaz. Uh, ben Davis will not return to training until Tuesday, Wednesday next week. Um, although he denied that this was anything to do with uh, possible a move away from the club for Ben. Uh, talk very much that it was just a fitness issue. That was it. Nothing about Ben Davis exiting the club, which is a rumour that has been doing the rounds and a report that has been going about Ben Davis. So, you know, Ben, certainly someone who, like I, like I said on the podcast last night, certainly divides opinion um, amongst Rangers fans. Just a reminder, guys, if you haven't done it, uh, please check out last night's podcast where I spoke to Jack from the Every Other Saturday podcast and we did a preview of the Rangers Savet game. That video is now available on the channel. It was streamed live last night. But uh, the other, obviously, was that Ridvan Yilmaz will be out. Um, until uh, the Morton game in the Cup. He will not be available till then. So it looks very much like, unfortunately, Borna Barisic will continue at left back against Servette, uh, much probably to the annoyance of a large number of Rangers fans who really do think, I think a lot of Rangers fans now, I think it's time that Borna moved on and left the club. Also, you know, one of the other things that come out of that is it is exceptionally worrying when it comes to talking about Ridvan. He does seem to be very injury prone. He missed a large number of games last season injured and now appears to be missing the start of this season. Missing a, a few games as well with injury. Is he the new Kamar Roof, the Turkish Kamar Roof? But uh, certainly his injury record is not the best and is, I think, of great concern to Rangers fans. Certainly it is to be hoped that we can get him fit and actually keep him fit or at least get to the bottom of whatever it is that is causing him to have all these injuries. Uh, Michael Beale also talked about Servetti, talked about the fact that uh, they'll be physical, they'll be direct, and they'll be tough to beat, tough to play against. Uh, he spoke about a number of their players as well. He talked about Antunes, who is one of their wingers, who is very talented. He also was asked about their striker, now, their striker is a guy called uh, Chris Bedia. Here is here is Chris Bedia. Chris Bedia has scored in all the previous rounds of the Champions League. He also has 18 goals in 39 games for Servette since joining in 2022. He's 27 years old, six foot three, a big unit. Certainly someone they like to target with their direct game. He is a very talented left-footed player. He will, of course, be without his partner in crime, um, his fellow striker, who is suspended for this game. Uh, that is the, uh, the French striker Enzo Crivelli, who was sent off after only four minutes in the first leg against Genk. Um, so uh, Chris Badia, he certainly singled out as someone they would have to watch and have to really pay attention to tonight against Servette. Uh, he is a dangerous customer. Now, another player who could well miss out tonight 
is this man here. He's called Gail Ondua. He is 27 year, years old, a Cameroon international, uh, a midfield player, a crucial midfield player, one of the talented midfield players in the Servette midfield. However, it seems that he will be not be able to play tonight after he missed the trip to Glasgow. Why did he miss the trip to Glasgow? No, he didn't sleep in or miss the plane. He was refused a visa to enter the country by British authorities and so therefore could not make the journey. Uh, Servet say it deplores the situation and has exhausted all avenues to try to resolve the matter. Translated a club statement on the web on the website read: Gail Ondua deprived from travel to Glasgow. His visa has not yet been issued by the British authorities. The player is absent from the trip to Glasgow. The significant efforts made for more than two weeks by the club and its player, also in collaboration with the Scottish Football Association, have not been enough. The club deplores this situation and supports its player and it's his team, which have to deal with a major player in its workforce for non-sporting reasons. Uh, interesting indeed. Is it that uh, someone at the Home Office is a secret Rangers fan and stopped him from travelling? But certainly a very bizarre reason for a player to miss a game, uh, much like I said to the annoyance of Servette. Um, other players who will miss the first leg for Servette include Captain Jeremy Frick, Miroslav Stefanovic, Kaigo Sunamato, Alexis Entunes, Enzo Crivelli, Alexander Ling and Theo Mannion. Uh, so Servette will be without a number of very talented players. Uh, their manager, who is a, a, manager, a guy called Rene Weiler, who came in this summer, said, it's clear these players are important for us. But I don't want to spend much time talking about players who can't play. I want to focus on the players who are capable of playing. It's a big challenge. They're a very good club with a lot of tradition and success, e.g. Rangers. And it's just a year ago they reached the final of the Europa League. It will be quite hard, especially because they lost their first game. So we expect a big reaction at home. We have to deliver an excellent performance when you're playing like this. It was a difficult team to play against. They defended well up and so on and so forth. So, you know, he is obviously full of praise for Rangers so, and recognising that it will be a, day, a difficult game. Certainly Rangers have to deliver tomorrow night. They will have the best possible opportunity given the fact that Zavet are missing a large number of very, very prominent, talented players from their lineup. This gives us you know, the only opportunity, one of the biggest opportunities to get that decent lead. We need, I think, two to three goals to take to Geneva to defend. You know, the team need to step it up. They need to perform. They need to go at it from minute one and they need to play handbrake free football. Michael Beale spoke about taking the handbrake off. He thought he spoke about the fact that the club need to take the handbrake off and play with freedom. And certainly, you know, listening to Stevie from Four, from Four Lads this morning on Rangers Review, talking about the fact that Rangers need to get back to remembering, um, you know, that they are Rangers and that when we go somewhere, we go somewhere and we impose our style and we impose Rangers on them and we don't worry too much about the opposition. You know, that is certainly something that that lot across the city do wherever they go. You know, they don't go with an intention of having to say, oh, we need to plan for this person, plan for that person, worry about this person. They go with the attitude, we will go, we'll attack, we'll beat them 6-2 if needs be, or 6-3. It does not matter as long as we win. And I think that's certainly an attitude that Rangers need to look at adopting um, if they're going to be successful in this Champions League campaign and also in this league campaign as well. Like I said, a big, big step up in performance is needed. Um, and I, I certainly, you know, hope that Michael Beale will not repeat the mistakes of that first game, certainly in terms of team selection. It was exceptionally worrying to see John Lundstrom put up in front of the media today. Is that dropping a hint that he will play? Hopefully not. Lundstrom is, a, is for me, a liability. You know, someone who's let the club down repeatedly and certainly should not play uh, on Wednesday night against Servette. It would, you know... For me, it would be a huge error to put him into the team. And certainly, I think, you know, something that uh, would not benefit the club in the slightest. So, you know, but we do have to go out there for minute one, go at them, high press them, put, put our put ourselves in their faces from minute one, match their physicality as well. And, you know, I think the players that we need to see out there, we do need to see Cifuentes, Cantwell and Danilo. I think those three players will be absolutely key tonight against Servette, come and join us on Glasgow Rangers Nation for the live stream of that game here on the channel. It'd be great to have you on board.
Okay, final story. Uh, Rangers manager Michael Beale is surprisingly been linked with a possible departure from the club to go to Wolves. Now, I think this is all paper talk. Michael Beale, you know, very much is, is in the infancy of his managerial career, has already walked away from one job. And I think if he walked away from this job after getting all the players that he wanted in the summer, he's going to get a bit of a reputation. This has come off the back of Wolves, English Premier League club Wolves, sacking their manager, Julian Lopetegui. Um, bookmakers reckon that Michael Beale is the second favourite for the job behind former uh, Bournemouth boss Gary O'Neill. Um, he is uh, the top favourite for the job. Michael Beale apparently is listed as six to four to take over just behind odds on favourite O'Neill. Um, now, I think it would be very surprising if Michael left. Like I said, I think he, he 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 likes managing Rangers. He wanted to be the Rangers boss. He walked away from QPR to become the Rangers boss. And the board have hugely backed him over the summer. You know, he'd be walking into a club where he had, again, he'd be in the same situation as last season, where he'd be taking someone else's players and trying to manage through to the end of the season. Also, Wolves are in financial troubles, apparently, allegedly as well. So that is certainly something that Glasgow Rangers are not, despite what that lot from across the city may tell you. Uh, so I find it highly unlikely that Michael will move on from Rangers. Um, some, of, some of you might be uh, relieved about that. Some of you might not be relieved about that. It is very much what you, you think about Michael and the future of the club. Certainly tonight is a huge, huge game, guys. Uh, nervous? worried uh i don't know what to expect i just like i said i just hope that rangers can get the starting lineup right first of all and we're not sat there when the lineup is released just under an hour but ahead of kickoff going Ugh, really you know like we did on saturday when we saw the likes of borna and lundstrom in the team uh but that is certainly the latest news on that and guys come and join us like i said for the live stream tonight of that game uh, be great to have you on board. Obviously, we'll be back throughout the day if there are any more stories that break about team news or about signings, um, about any further investment in the club, or also about any departures uh, with strong rumours that Glenn Kamara will be the next out the door for Rangers with fees between five and a half and seven million mentioned for the player. Well, thank you so much for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation. Please hit that sub, ring that notification bell and come and join the channel for absolutely nothing. As always, guys, I need you to do two things for me. Number one, please smash that like. It helps. And always remember, we are...